Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to define what the direction cosines are. And now, since we're talking about the dot product, it's going to help us do so. So we have the definitions of the dot product. We have the definition of the angle between any two vectors. And now we have some additional boxes here that define what the direction cosines are. But let's take it one step at a time. First of all, let's imagine here we have a cube. And the cube has sides one by one by one. So it's a cube with side equal to one. And also notice that we have a vector drawn from this corner right here, the origin, to this corner right there, directly across from the origin at an angle like that. So diagonally across through that vector. And then we have three components of the vector. We have a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z, which are the three components of vector a. Notice that by definition, the vector a can be set equal to the sum of the three components, the x component plus the y component plus the z component. And if you place the y component of the vector over here and the z component of the vector over here, you add the x component plus the y component plus the z component, that gives you the vector from the origin to the point diagonally across from the origin there. All right, now, what do we mean by the direction cosines? Well, first of all, let's define the three angles between the vector A and the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So theta sub x is the vector between, is the angle between the vector and the x-axis, theta sub y is the angle between the vector and the y-axis, and theta sub z is the angle between the vector and the z-axis. Now we're going to define those angles or the cosine of those angles. The cosine of theta sub x is by definition the adjacent side over the hypotenuse and we can set that equal to the adjacent side can be set equal to the magnitude of a sub x and the hypotenuse would be a so it's the ratio of a sub x divided by a and notice we have something over here to that extent we can do the same for the cosine of theta sub y that's going to be equal to a sub y over a and the cosine of theta sub z is going to be defined as a sub z divided by a. So notice those three ratios, a sub x over a, a sub y over a, and a sub z over a, are now defined as gamma sub x, gamma sub y, and gamma sub z. It doesn't matter what symbol we use, I just chose the symbol gamma, but these three symbols right here, gamma sub x, gamma sub y, and gamma sub z, are what we call the direction cosines. They're simply the ratio of the x component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector, or the magnitude of the x component divided by, by the magnitude of the vector, the magnitude of the y component divided by the magnitude of the vector, and the magnitude of the z component divided by the magnitude of the vector. In other words, the direction cosines are simply the cosine of the angle between those two, the cosine of the angle between, oh, and that's the wrong one, that should be sub y, not sub z, I just noticed that, and here the direction cosine z is equal to the cosine of the angle theta sub z. And one more thing about the direction cosines, notice that if you take the direction cosine between the vector and the x-axis squared, plus the direction cosine between the vector and the y-axis squared, plus the direction cosine between the vector and the z-axis squared, add them all up, they should equal one. And so that's what we mean by the direction cosines. The direction cosines is the cosine of the three angles created between the vector and the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So let's find the direction cosines in this case. First of all, what's the magnitude of the vector A? Well, the magnitude of the vector A is going to be equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared, which of course are all equal to 1, and so this is going to be equal to the square root of 3, which means that the direction cosine for the x direction is going to be equal to a sub x over a, which is going to be 1 over the square root of 3. The direction cosine for the y direction is equal to a sub y over a, which is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 3, and the direction cosine for z is equal to a sub z divided by a, which is going to be equal to 1 divided by the square root of 3. Of course, a is always the square root of 3, and the magnitude of the x, the y, and the z components are always going to be equal to 1, equal to the side of the cube. Now, to show that this is indeed correct, let's then just say that the 
direction cosine in the x direction square plus the direction cosine in the y direction square plus the direction cosine in the z direction square must equal to 1. And let's do that. That's 1 over the square root of 3 quantity squared plus 1 over the square root of the 3 quantity squared plus 1 over the square root of the 3 quantity squared must equal 1. And sure enough, this is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is indeed equal to 1. And that proves that that is correct. So what are the direction cosines? It's the direction of the three angles between any vector in space related to the x, the y, and the z direction. So when you take the cosine of those three angles, those are the three direction cosines. And the direction cosines gives you an indication of how close the vector is relative to those three um, uh, coordinates, x, y, and z. If the, if the number is large, if it's close to 1, then the angle is very small. If the number is close to 0, then the angle is very big. If the angle is 0, then of course the angle is 90 degrees. If the, ang if the, if the direction cosine is 1, then the angle is 0 degrees. So the direction cosine gives you a feel of how close the vector in space is to the x-axis, to the y-axis, and to the z-axis. And so that's the purpose of dealing with direction cosines. It gives you a feel of the direction of the vector relative to the x, the y, and the z-axis. And that's what we mean by the direction cosines.